everyone and welcome to this week's Trimcraft Tuesday video. This week I thought we would take a little bit of a break from the scrapbooking and make some cards. I'm going to use first edition Fiesta Fever to make three different cards and I just love this paper pad. I keep making projects with it. You saw my, or you can see now, my big bag of scraps that I've been using. So yes, uh, the first card is really, really, really simple to make. So I've just taken a six by six card blank and I'm going to cut four rectangles of just the random scraps that I've got. Um, the rectangles are, well, basically you need to cut one side which is the length of your card blank and one which is half of that so five and three quarters and um two, uh, two and three quarters except um not many six by six card blanks are true six by six so do measure them to check beforehand and basically just want a quarter of an inch lower than whatever it is kind of thing and then with those rectangles make a mark at the exact center on one side draw your diagonal lines to make the triangles now you don't actually have to do it this way if you were wanting to make you could make four cards the exact same way then you could do a square that was five and three quarters and then just cut it on both diagonal lines and then you would have the four triangles to use or you could do that twice and use like two different pattern papers on each card you get where I'm get going at here there's multiple ways of doing it I did it this way because I also wanted to keep the little triangles I'm cutting off here for the next card so yes I'm keeping those those are going to be used in the next card as I said so with those all cut I am just sort of measuring them up on my card the reason I cut them slightly smaller that quarter of an inch is because I like a nice white border around them and then the white lines between the triangles as well I just think it looks neater and it just yeah I like the way that looks so I'm just making sure those are all kind of going to fit together I hadn't measured one or cut one completely wrong which is likely for me let's be honest and then I'm just going to put those down with some tacky glue always best with um, a card like this because you know just so you can move it around a little bit in case you get it wrong if you do it with double-sided tape then it's very hard to adjust should you need to so yes those are all going on like that just making sure it got my nice white borders as i said and then all i'm going to do is grab a contrasting paper there's not much orange on the pattern papers i've used for my triangles so i've grabbed this orange i'm going to stamp this happy birthday stamp on there that is a dovecraft stamp i'm going to emboss that in a black glittery embossing powder i have to say this is one of my favorite embossing powders i use it all the time i highly recommend just getting a black glitter like if you're new to embossing you don't know what colors to get and you're overwhelmed by all the different color possible possibilities get a clear get a white get a black and get a black glitter because it's just awesome and it's enjoyable to watch the embossing powder melt which is why i've seemed to have left all that footage in anyways then i'm just gonna sort of just trim that down so it's just just around the sentiment kind of thing and not too big and i did stamp it a bit wonky so that means that's why i'm sort of having to adjust my cutting there a sec um i do really need to get one of those proper stamp block not blocks stamp platform things it's on my wish list anyways i'm gonna back that with another contrasting color and what i'm gonna do with this is my current favorite thing to do which is go around the edges with an embossing pen and then add a clear embossing glitter around the edges and you just so when you put your sentiment on your backing paper it's just a nice little glittery thing around it but you can still see the color in the pattern paper underneath it did this very recently in another video so you can get the idea that i'm doing this a lot at the moment if you don't have an embossing pen that's that's fine you can just use your ink pad and dab it around the edges kind of thing totally not necessary to have the pen i just happen to use it because i have it I'm also going to add a uh, black distress oxide around the edge of the middle one just so it stands out nicely again doesn't have to be distress oxide you don't even have to use a blending tool even if you've got like the cheapest black ink from poundland just take the ink pad and dab it around the edges of your paper and you'll pretty much get the same effect it's just obviously it's preferable to do it this way but totally not completely necessary so those are just going on with double-sided tape and boom card one is done i told you it was simple Second one, kind of slightly more complex, but not really. I'm using those triangles that were left over from the first card and just placing them at the top and bottom, slightly overlapping each other because they had to because of the space that was available. And I'm just putting those down again with the tacky glue. And yes, I was just sort of making sure like what the purple overlapped on one side and didn't overlap on the other side, but you don't have to worry about that kind of thing. That's just me being very, very pernickety really. And then once those are down and making sure they're dry so I don't knock them out of place, I'm going to take a craft knife and a metal ruler and sort of uh, cut out a diamond shape around those triangles I've stuck down. As you can see, I very, very carefully measured out exactly where I was going to cut 
nod, I just eyeballed it, I always do. Um, always remember, I know this sounds really obvious and I don't mean to sound patronising or, or anything, but make sure you open up your car blank before you cut this space because I have on many occasions forgotten to do that and cut through both layers of the card, so yeah, it sounds so obvious, but maybe it's just because I'm an idiot and I always make that mistake, but anyway, so I've made my sort of diamond aperture thing there, and I'm going to stick a paper on the inside of the card blank, so there's something pretty to look at through. This is my favourite paper from this paper pad, the Sugar Skulls on the pink glitter. Oh, it's so gorgeous, I love it so much. Don't worry, I have already fussy cut an entire one of these papers already, so yes. And again, stamping and embossing, this time on this really pretty rainbow colour one. This is another Dovecraft stamp, this Let's Celebrate one. Again, I'm going with my black glitter embossing powder because it just, it matches everything really. And then I'm going to, with that blue paper, just very roughly sketch out a diamond shape. You know, when you just draw a cross and then do the diagonal lines around it. So it's probably not a perfect diamond shape, but I don't have a diamond die and I was too lazy to get the silhouette out, so... There we go. I've also gone around the edges of those again in the same way with the Black Distress Oxide again, so they just kind of stand out a little bit. And then I'm just going to stick those on like that, so we've got our sentiment in the centre of the card. And then I am going to finish by taking some of these Simply Creative uh, Gems. These are the 6mm rainbow ones, and I'm going to put those all the way around that white diamond border thing. Um, I know you might be like, well, that sounds like a lot of effort, but Honestly, it didn't even take five minutes. If you just, I just dab sort of four or five at a time dabs of tacky glue and then just pop them on like that with a craft knife. Um, obviously, they are adhesive back, so you don't have to do the tacky glue stage. I just like to be extra sure that they're going to stay in place. And yeah, there they are. If you don't want to put that much effort in, then you could easily use just like Nuvo drops or something that would be quicker, but obviously, then you've got to wait for them to dry. So it's you know, either or. Okay, last card. This seems to be going very quickly. I'm out of breath. So I'm going to use the first edition Build a Unicorn die set. And I know what you're thinking if you're a regular to the channel. Grace, you don't like unicorns. What are you doing? Well, no, admittedly I don't. But that doesn't mean other people don't like them. And obviously I don't make cards to give to myself. So I can give this to someone who likes unicorns. <laughs> so anyways, I just cut a circle again in the aperture way. Um with a circle cutter that is about 10.5 centimeters that circle I think on a 6 by 6 card blank and I have die cut all of the different pieces from that Build a Unicorn die set um, with the first edition uh, Fiesta Fever pad. I've also, but I cut the horn and the ears with some black cardstock and some Dovecraft glitter cardstock in the colour candy, you'll see that in a minute, really really gorgeous glittery pink colour. I've um, put little circles in all the flowers and everything just to make sure, you know, they're all in place and stuff, give them a chance to dry. And then I'm just going to arrange everything in place, putting down the ears and the horn first because obviously they need to kind of be behind the flowers. Yes, I did make a mistake and put one flower down first, but just shh, ignore that. And yes, those are going to go down there. I put the ears quite wide kind of thing because that meant I could have a wider flower crown, I suppose. But from now on, I'm just going to just stick all the flowers down really with lots of glue dots. When I was putting the little circles in the centre of each flower, I was trying to pay attention. Oh, I've sped this up by the way, so obviously it doesn't take as long. Um, yeah, I just made sure they were like a quite a contrasting colour to the flower kind of thing, just so they would stand out and stuff. So yeah, these are all just going to go, yeah, down. Didn't put too much thought into it. Generally, I put the little ones down first, so they're all in the background and the big ones on the top. Now I'm going to find my little leaves. The leaves you can do in a way where you can do like the solid colour one, not solid colour, like the solid shape one and then put the delicate one on top of that. Or you can do them separately like I do. I personally prefer that look, but you know, either or it doesn't really matter. So those are going on there. Obviously, the little delicate ones can't really use a glue dot for that, so I use the tacky glue. And then these little hearts, again cut with that die set. I just think they're so so super cute so I just added a few of those including one of them that kind of just covered up where I slightly messed up cutting the circle there because that circle cutter is a very 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 cheap one from the works um, I do have like a really nice circle cutter by X cut but the way it works you can't figure out where the exact center of the circle is going to be so it's not really good for doing a card like this where you need the circle to be in a particular place kind of thing anyways 
I've just chosen a very, very plain paper to go on the inside of the card. The blue one, because there's not too much blue on the flowers and stuff, and it contrasts nicely with the pink ears and the pink horn. Um, I did think about using the pattern side, but it was just, it was, you know, it was taking too much attention away from the unicorn bit. So, yeah. Then I've added the little eyelashes, bit fiddly, used tweezers for those. And then I'm just going to finish off with these little sentiments, which are from the 6x6 paper pad. You can see the equivalent there from the 12x12 paper pad, which I was going to use and then went, oh, it's a bit big, that one. And, yeah, so I've just got live your dreams, dreams, free spirit and viva forever yes like the spice girls viva forever so there we go there are the three cards um thank you so so much for watching i will of course put all the links down in the description box just a friendly reminder for those of you who are interested obviously not all my trim craft projects um get a video only one a week does um most of them go on my instagram so if you're not following me there and you'd like to see them then go check them out but absolutely everything and from all the other design team members and um, anyone can upload here there's the inspiration area on Trimcraft's website where you can see all the different things so I really highly recommend checking that out I will of course link it down below but yes okay I am finished hopefully you are seeing some close-ups right now and um, please leave me a thumbs up if you enjoyed chat to me in the comments I love talking to you guys and yep okay time for me to go thanks again bye bye